you know so when i came to america in my head i was like ah you know let me let's hustle this thing again but then like i said i never saw this coming right so i was struggling i was you know and i did not know as much as i thought i knew america humbled me <laughs> <laughs> Yankee. Uh, I thought I was disciplined until I got to America. Okay, what does that mean? Ah, America go humble you now. Yeah, I'm Lambo. Don't get it wrong, but I am no longer the Lambo you knew. Kinto kuro leko talo fumi ni hundred k view, hundred thousand view talo fumi. I'm sorry for the people that don't understand you, but hmm. In fact, I want a babo. Want to sort that you bear long. Want to hear your jail ologbon. Ologbon. Tani tisha. Tani tisha. So go ahead. Go ahead and translate, and translate it. Trans- okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> to tell you how passionate I was about the okra, I did not even invite Ling to come and eat it. <laughs> it's slimy. She doesn't know what to do with it. Sincerely. It just came out of my mouth. I said, ah, that's Pomo. She said, what is Pomo? I said, Pomo is Pomo. <laughs> <laughs> All my life, I've never... I'm like, man, you're brave. I, I can't Baba, do that. I lost all sense of respect or <laughs> adulting. I've not seen noodles in a long time. <laughs> Hi. <Hey, boy. laughs> yes, I, I know what you're thinking. Uh, Mr. Teju Babyface, what's up with the heart turned to the back? Uh, what's up with the hip-hop thing? What's up with the Fresh Prince of Bele thing? Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, that is, if you're listening on our Spotify or the podcast, then you can't see how I'm dressed, which is why I always say, please try to do both. Subscribe to the podcast and also watch on YouTube. So why am I dressed like this? Well, it's my guest. Okay, this is how he dresses. Heart turned to the back all the time. And I like him. So I'm trying to honor him. I'm trying to mirror the way that he dresses, essentially. My guest today was struggling in Nigeria barely six years ago. He was trying to make his musical dreams come true and it wasn't happening. And then he came to the United States just for one concert. And then he met a girl in the United States. He married the girl in the United States. He stayed in the United States. And in those four years, he's gone on to become a major global superstar in those four years how does one do that in four years that's what lamborghini tells me on this one i speak to lamborghini from ling and lam again everybody says you don't want to miss this one but i don't lie okay you really don't want to miss this one if you have any dreams that look like they're not about to come true you really want to stay tuned for this one Lamborghini. Eh, a bunny. My man. <laughs> so, wait, wait. First of all, yeah. I just met your wife, Ling, yeah. for the first time five minutes ago. Yeah. I, I just met her in person in for person. the first time. Yeah. Every time before now, I'd seen the videos. Yeah. And as soon as I met her, only one question went through my mind. Yeah. What juju or what juju? <laughs> oh boy. What? What? What voodoo did you use to get that wife, <laughs> that girl, to agree to marry you? What? That she's literally one of the most beautiful people I've seen in my life. <laughs> I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm seriously. The camera does her no favors. I mean, on camera she's already beautiful. Yeah. But I, I thought in that person. was in person. She's yeah. even she's about thrice as beautiful. That's beautiful. Now you understand when I always I'm on camera shouting my beautiful, beautiful. No, no. Now I understand why you <laughs> cried when she called you in Nigeria to say she was in love with you. You, you, you wept. <laughs> um, <laughs> if I were I, you, I, I jumped would weep up. too. Of course, of course. He that walketh with the Lord, his steps are directed <laughs> and positioned <That's amazing. laughs> in perfect places. You know, so... Thank you so much for the compliment. It that's, makes me that's it makes me happy. That's my that's my that's my crown right there. You know, I don't I don't joke with Ling at all. And you, yeah. you shouldn't, man. I, I mean, yeah. I mean, we do know that it takes more than uh, beauty should be more than skin yeah. deep. You know, yeah. uh, uh, 
uh, a woman of uh, beauty and charms will fade but a woman of character will remain yeah. the yeah. words of king solomon we, yeah. we do know that but man it doesn't hurt to, to have be, that, to be, that thing you going, know when you, know you wrote, when you wrote to the left and right on the bed you wake up in the morning 6 a.m yeah. you know you, you, your day is beautiful from the moment you wake up <laughs> no wonder to <laughs> kusibe <laughs> you know all i have is one you know and it's a blessing yeah. i tell people all the time it is um mostly in our time it's not easy to come across a good woman you know someone that understands you and someone that um you know just allows you to be yourself you know and allows you to grow you know uh, you know let's just grow together it's not easy you know so it's a it's a big blessing that I do not take for granted. But oh boy, you're a, you're a global superstar <laughs> now, and look, I'm not saying that because of the millions of fans that you have who follow you globally. Yeah, I'm not saying that because you've appeared on some of the biggest TV shows in the world. None yeah. of that. <laughs> I'm saying that because of the protocol that we had to go through <laughs> to book you for this interview. The protocol. First, first we had to write a letter. Then we had to speak to white people. We had to speak to Americans. And then in, in my mind, I'm like, oh boy. Now, so the people go international. <laughs> Baba, don't kill me. <laughs> Baba. <laughs> but, look. but in all fairness, yeah. I, I want to say, I know you've always been a very professional person, you know, outside of, let's even remove the TV. I've, you're a woman I respect a lot and I've studied you from Afra, even from Nigeria. Uh, you, your show is a show that we all were wishing to be on, you know. So even when the communication started and I, you know, told you that this is the process for us to be able to do this, you did not you did not behave like some people, you know. <laughs> oh, some people take offense at it. Yeah, yeah, you know, wow. you know, you didn't behave like some people. You, you respected where I am and what I, we have been able to build around us, you know. And you just followed the protocol, you know. And I, I, my respect for you even went higher because I was just quietly waiting. I was like, you know, I know you have my number. You could just say, ah, Lambo. And I would just say, okay, but I respected the fact that you respected what we have built, you know, because that makes me feel like you have our best interest at heart as well. Like, and if I come to you, I will follow that same protocol because I want to make sure that, you know, I'm respecting your territory, you know. So, uh, and look at it now, we're here. We're here. <laughs> we're here. We're here. Which is awesome. Look, I want to ask you a question that yes. if any interviewer asks normally i consider it a very very weak question it's, yeah. it's a needless question when mm. most people ask it yeah but it's pertinent in this case and not because i'm the one who is asking it it's just that it is necessary to ask mm -hmm. in the face of what you have achieved and what you're achieving mm -hmm. okay like i said you're global yeah did you ever see this coming no no capital letter n o no in fact i initially fought it you know coming from nigeria so background ling has always loved documenting our experience from when we were dating you know like she's very big on documenting stuff you know and i loved it about her um going viral was by accident you know we we used, i used to just post our shenanigans on my instagram page you know then i'll just post it and um, people were like, oh, you guys are fun to watch, you guys are this. But what really changed everything was when uh, Corede Bello, you know, um, told me, he was like, ah, you guys are so much fun. Why don't you go on TikTok? I said, what is TikTok? I didn't even know what is TikTok, you know? <laughs> Link also were like, what are they doing on TikTok? And then we opened it, we saw like a bunch of, you know, young people just dancing. And he was like, no, you guys should go on. So we, were, we, we, we joined TikTok and... Uh, a good friend of mine, Ernest, precisely, but in the industry, they call him Rabbi, but Ernest, I have not eaten Nigerian food in more than two years. I was craving Nigerian food. So his wife sent me frozen okra. She cooked okra, she froze it, 
and shipped it to me from Jersey to my to where I am. And then I opened the okra, defroze it, and I was eating the okra. To tell you how passionate I was about the okra, I did not even invite Ling to come and eat it. <laughs> so she was walking by. She, she was at the gym. She was walking by. I turned on the camera because I was trying to capture the moment so I can send it to Ernest and say, the okra we send. <laughs> you know? O -talenu. O -talenu. Link sat beside me and I said, do you want to try? First, it looks strange to her. It's slimy. She doesn't know what to do with it. One way or the other, I gave her one and the camera was still rolling and she, she saw the elements of the okra. There was pomo. There was a dry fish. Everything was, all the elements were flowing. And she goes, uh, what is, what is that? I said, Pomo, sincerely, it just came out of my mouth. I said, ah, that's Pomo. She said, what is Pomo? I said, Pomo is Pomo. <laughs> <laughs> all my life, I've never grown up in Lagos. I don't know any other name for Pomo. All I remember in my head is Pomo. And, you know, we recorded that video, posted it on TikTok, went to, went to bed and woke up the next day, the video went viral, you know? Um, and it just, we just both looked at each other like, okay, so people just, you know, people can relate to stuff like this. And for me, it was, I'll tell you why I said I struggled with it. The usual pride of a man, you know, I was like, ah, you know, um, but I fought it because mostly like pride, like, ah, I, didn't, I, didn't, I don't see myself as someone that will be eating food or like, sh you know, doing all these shenanigans on social media and all of that. I didn't see my, I'm a serious guy. I'm coming from a background of, I'm a musician and I do prison reform. You know, I deal with serious matters and all my life, that is the only life I've known. But here I am in love with a woman that loves, you know, fun, you know, she wants to play, she wants to you know, so I started struggling with it. You know, like, so at the point I asked myself, I said, why are, you, why are you struggling? Have fun. There is no standard to marriage. Marriage is both of you coming together and creating whatever you both understand. You know, so I just allowed myself. If I had not allowed myself, you know, this global conversation we're talking today wouldn't have been a topic. You know, I wouldn't have known there was something on the other side, you know, waiting for for me through my wife and all the blessings that has come with it. And my biggest takeaway is you can never choose how God is going to bless you. Mm. you. You can't. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so I have, I just had goosebumps. <laughs> you could see the hair on the back, <laughs> the, the hairs on the back of my neck, they, they just stood up. Because, because I'm that guy too. In fact, if you follow the trajectory of my career, yeah. for, for the longest time, I wasn't on social media. Mm -hmm. I, I, I thought it was faffing around. Yeah. I thought it was, with all due respect to those early adopters, I thought it was on serious. <laughs> yep. I mean, I'm a TV person traditionally, yep. so yep. I, can, I, can, I can empathize with where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. That whole, I can't be doing this. Yep. On, which which is funny to me because I now saw a video of you. It must have taken you a lot to have worn those white drawers. <laughs> I saw you in white underwear making noodles was that you or was that somebody else you were, it was you were me. white drawers i'm like man you're brave i, I can't Baba, do that i lost all sense of respect or, or <laughs> adulting i've not seen noodles in a long time <laughs> a boy i was working with he shoots you know he was a young chap his name is michael we had a production he came with a, a, a pack of noodles, a whole box. Only me daru ni money. Noodles. I've been eating, uh, you know, because again, Ling and Lam, we go around, we do, you know, part of our thing became food. We became very huge with food. But it's uh, Roman noodles. I became Roman with noodles. Yeah, uh, Rom I think it's ramen. Ramen noodles. Eh? Yeah. When I saw my Indomie noodle <laughs> with the green packet, <laughs> with the onion flavor, chicken flavor, <laughs> you remove clothes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's look, that's just amazing. Thank you to me. Yeah, what, what you guys are doing. Thank in, you. In this thing, and so here's the thing. Yeah, you never saw this coming. 
it just happened by accident. I mean, that flies in the face of everything they tell us about setting goals, yeah. writing down goals, and all of that. Because you are a musician. Yeah. I mean, if God had given you pen mm-hmm. and paper to write out what you wanted, you'd have written something like, I, I hope my music blows up. Always the first thing on my list. But that's not what happened. No. I mean, so what do you say to all these write goals down, put goals down, hmm. and all of that? Uh, ha- set targets. Set targets. Have ten year goals, have five year goals. Walk towards your goals. You can't achieve if you don't see and all of that. Yeah, I say this. Rather than goals are important, but what is more important is discipline, right? Uh, discipline is one thing that goals change, but discipline is important. If I had written my goals, becoming Ling and Lam was not part of it. You know, becoming the guy that goes around, eats food, and, you know, pranks and love and all, was never a part of it. But I'll tell you something. Because we, we are disciplined with anything that we do, when we saw that, okay, people love watching us, we sat down with ourselves and said, okay, rule number one, we deeply love each other. We are not doing this because of social media. How do we ensure that this does not affect our relationship and our marriage? And I'll tell you, that discipline, 80% of the time, we don't even remember to capture the moments that we both share. What the world is watching is 20% that we now remember, to ca- moments we now remember. But the love that we share, the laughter, the joy, 80% of it, it would have happened like, yeah, if we had recorded that, that would have, you know, that would have been amazing. So, goals is, goals are important, you know, now, and I'll put it this way, there are specific kind of career paths that you, you'll be in. You must have goals, you know, if you're a basketballer, if you're a, a footballer, or you want to become a medical doctor, there are certain things you must have, but while you have your goal, Pay attention to the unforeseen. Mm. That's where a lot of people are struggling today. A lot of people hold on to their goals and they become blind to the unforeseen. Mm. But most times, the gold you are looking for is in the unforeseen. Mm. You know, I came to America for a prison concert. I never thought Linga Lam. It was my unforeseen. But when it happened, when I saw it, me and my wife were like, okay, let's keep it experiential. We'll just keep sharing our experience, which means we will never run out of content. We're not under pressure. We're just sharing our life. If we go anywhere, we share the experience. So no pressure. We don't need to overly crack our head or anything. And that is it. The unforeseen became the scene. Mm. Great, great, great. By the way, by the way, did yeah. you notice how I'm wearing my hat? Yeah, I, I, yeah. This is this is this is for you. <laughs> no, this is for you. What did you eat? Kill a kill a jack, kill a jack. I'm like King of Talk, Loa Lori. I mean, what did you eat? I didn't eat anything. I'm like, this is Lambo. This- yeah. <laughs> I'm talking to Lambo. Man, let me look. And I kind of like it. And I like the fact that I'm wearing a bucket hat today. So let me, you know. To honor you, let it be that you're the one with your hands to the back. <laughs> yeah, I like it. I like it. <laughs> okay, so look, I know the story. You've told the story a yes. thousand times. Yes. How you and Ling met. And so, I, I mean, for those who don't know, I'm just going to give the Cliff's notes. Yeah. You can correct me if I'm wrong at yes, any point in time or just jump in. Yeah. Uh, there are a few mini questions in this question, but yeah. I'm going to get to a question eventually, I promise. Mm-hmm. So, you mentioned you came to America for this prison concert. Yeah. Okay. So, first of all, where was your career at that point in Nigeria? Your life and your career at that point? Were were you good or were you struggling? I was struggling. Because, again, I put a couple of records, but I never have success according to the standard of men and the industry. I released an album in 2017. The album was not a success, but the album moved me from point a to b you know um that album is called salt that was the album that took me out of nigeria for the first time to the uk where i went to perform the album 
and then I performed the album in the prison in the UK. That same album is what brought me to America, you know, for me to do a fundraise concert, you know, um, to support my prison projects. So, to the eyes of men and to my definition of what I thought a hit album should be, it wasn't because of number wise. But in terms of value, that album is the most valuable project that I had put out at that time because it moved me from that level where I was struggling, you know. Literally, all I did was I used to go around and anybody watching this in the industry, industry, few industry people know and people that are, you know, close to me. I used to just go around, knock on people's door, trying to raise money to go and help prisoners. You know, that was all I did. You know, I would organize shows. Everybody will come together, support me. We'll go and support the prisoners. And then we started raising funds. And I'll get lawyers who come together, who go and pay their bill. You know, so when I came to America, in my head, I was like, ah, you know, let me, let's hustle this thing again. But then, like I said, I never saw this coming, right? So I was struggling. I was, I was in a place where I was asking a lot of questions, you know, and I did not know as much as I thought I knew. America humbled me. <laughs> Yankee. Uh, America humbled me. So I wasn't some of the success that I wasn't able to achieve. Now, when I got here and I started looking back, I saw all my loopholes. I thought I was disciplined until I got to America. Okay, what does that mean? Ah, America go humble you now. When I got here, all the you know, because again, I'm a street boy. Growing up in Lagos, street level, everything I moved around, I moved around, I'm free. It's almost like we were just freestyling, no proper structuring. You know, you can go to your neighbor, knock on the door, back, back, back. And then I got to America and the state I was living, I, I hardly saw anybody called Nigerian to start with. And what state things- was that? Connecticut. Connecticut. Okay. Yeah. Now I've come to meet a, a couple of Nigerians. I won't say a lot, but I've met here and there. But everything that I thought I knew is not the way the system works here. So the first thing I did was I sat myself down, humbled myself, and I started unlearning mannerisms, unlearning work behaviors. You know, the only thing I'm grateful for that I still you know, that I, I didn't have to change because I've always been a hustler. Is my discipline. But discipline without structure is failure. Okuma, discipline, mm. you know, you are just, you're disciplined, but you don't, you lack structure. You know, as small as it is, right? Yeah. For us to sit down today, today is because I've unlearned and I've built structure. Yeah. You had to go through my structure to get me to sit down. Yes. A lot of people, I'm not, again, no disrespect to them. A lot of people have been trying to get me to sit down and do interview. And when I tell them to just go through the simple protocol, they can't do it. I just laugh. I say, no, you don't value me. Mm. If you know my value, yeah, I'm Lambo. Don't get it wrong. But I am no longer the Lambo you knew. Mm. Yeah. So I'm playing with them. I'm laughing with them. I'm shaking their hand. Back, 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 back. You roll. Once you want to knock on that door, you have to go through the protocol. Some of them get offended. But while they are offended, I'm smiling because I've protected my value. If you cannot go through all of those things. So those things humbled me. And I started learning structuring. I started learning and understanding that you cannot just freestyle through life. So even when God gives you an opportunity, what are you doing to structure the opportunity? Mm. You know, if not, you know how many people don't go viral? People go viral every day, but because they don't have structure, they are not able to harvest their viralism. Mm. Yeah, that can hurt. Is it? Yeah. I mean, that can hurt, can it? Yeah. You go viral with one video and then you try to create the magic again and no. it's gone. Oh, I mean, man. you got that one moment yeah. in time that yeah. most people will never get. You got yours, but because you didn't have structures, it just it just went. It, 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 it disappears. And 
embrace slow and steady. Like one thing about me and Ling, we have never ever sat down to say, oh, we want to make sure that every video we post must be viral. No, we're just having fun. And then we woke up one day and saw that we've crossed two billion views. Wow. You know, and we're just like, ah, two billion? Kinto Kuro Leko. Talo Fumi, 100k view. 100,000 view. Talo Fumi. Ah, I'm sorry for the people that don't understand it, but <laughs> who dashed me 100,000 view before I left Lagos? And then I started seeing, you know, 100 million view 200 to the point that we crossed 2 billion views and the greatest part of it is we don't see it because once you see it it gets to you you know so again these are all the things that for me when i look at that journey and i look at who i was in lagos bringing it back to your question yeah the struggle the struggle and everything it was important but one yeah, there's a Yoruba proverb that says, mm. uh, I want to that So go ahead and translate it. <laughs> <laughs> the translation yeah. is that the Yoruba people of Africa hold that you cannot claim to be wise if you have not suffered. Yes. Suffering is the only teacher that teaches you wisdom. Wisdom. If you claim to be wise, then show us your stripes and your scars of yeah. suffering. Yeah. That's just what it means. That's what it means. Okay. So, omotobaji amangbon mujia. Hi. Uh, thank you for watching this video thus far. I know at this point you want to keep enjoying the video and you don't want me interrupting, but this is as far as this comes. So, first of all, again, thank you. Uh, so, at this point, you have three options. The first thing to do will be to subscribe to our podcast and then listen to the entire interview uninterrupted. So you can do that. Just go to the Teju Baby Face Deep Dive podcast, wherever you get your podcast from. Or secondly, you could become one of our members, one of our YouTube members, you know, just subscribe to the membership below. Our members get to watch the full videos uninterrupted, okay? Or third, if you do none of those two, you could wait around for a couple of days for us to keep posting the clips of this interview but i can assure you that we're not going to post everything we're just going to keep posting clips here and there obviously of course i'd prefer that you do number one and number two subscribe to the podcast download and listen to the audio and also become one of our members that's how you show your support for us thank you very much god bless you wait for the next one